Okay, so I just want to go through some of the homework questions. Um, maybe do one um, and just kind of show you what they look like for chapter 12. Uh, this one is using linear regression to find the linear function that best fits the data. Uh, one and three and five, seven and six are all basically the same. You're taking your data and you're plugging it, the, 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 the X and Y values into Excel and then finding the uh, equation that fits the best fits the data, the linear, linear regression equation that best fits the equation or the line that is best, can best estimate those values. Uh, notice in seven, six and seven that you enter the data a little differently. You enter the coefficient of x in one box and the y-intercept in another box. In numbers one, three, and five, you have the y equals here and you just plug in the right side of the equation there. In numbers two and four, the homework, they give you the equation and they ask you to uh, estimate some other value of y given some value of x. So you're using the equation they give you and then plugging in whatever number for x. I think I'll look at number five here. Um, a couple of things I wanted to mention. One is, you know, this is a horizontal table, so I'm gonna copy it, just highlight it, copy it, click over into Excel. I've already pasted, but I can just paste again. There it is. And what I'd like to do is transpose this or change it from rows for X and Y to columns for X and Y. So what I'm gonna do is highlight all of these cells and then control C to copy it. Click on where I wanna put the new columns. So I'll click right here, any cell, but I wanna put them here. And then I'm gonna to go to paste. And so notice I have additional options here for paste. Um, and the one I wanna use is to transpose it. I think it's this one here, it should say transpose. Um, it's gonna change the rows to columns or vice versa. So I'm gonna use that, transpose, and you can see now I've got my X and Y in columns instead of in rows. Um, that can be useful or you, could you can also just type these back in into Excel. You know, how did I figure out how to do that? I, I didn't know how to do it, so I just Google searched it. Um, how do you transpose rows and columns in Excel? I think that the first website here was the one that told me how to do it, or maybe I, yeah, I scrolled down a little bit. Tra transpose rows, uh, rows to columns and vice versa in Excel, and right below it, transpose data, rows to columns, vice versa for Excel in a Mac. So it might be a little different in a Mac. Um, if you just scroll down and then follow through the instructions, you can see it. Uh, what I had to do just to reiterate here was copy the cells I wanted to pick to transpose and then click on somewhere else. So just to show you again, go up here, copy, click somewhere else, like say there. Then the paste menu gives me more options, one of which is a transpose option. Boom. Okay, so now I wanna find my least squares linear regression equation. I just highlight these cells. I go up to insert. I want a scatter plot. That's this little guy here. Um, insert line or area chart. Probably safer to go ahead and open up the charts, see all the charts. This is a bunch of different graphs. I want a scatter plot. Let's see. There it is, scatter plot. Uh, that's not the one I want though. Let's hit cancel. Click on this guy. There we go. I need some choices here. There it is. Scatter plot right there. So the one I want. You can see this data, it does go up, but it seems like the line, you know, when I draw the line in here, it's gonna kind of cruise right through the middle there. So I'm gonna add the trend line here. There it is. I'm guessing the R here is a little bit smaller than we had before. Let's look. So we have to double click on that line and look at the options here for our trend line. I wanna display the equation and display the R value. No, it's about the same. Okay, so there's our trend line, and um, notice the 
problem in WAMAP said to round our numbers to two decimal places. Um, so if we look back in Excel, we have our y value to two decimal places, but we do not have the, I mean, we, excuse me, we have our slope to two decimal places, 19.629, but we do not have this y-intercept to two decimal places, 644.8. We only have it to one decimal place. So how do I do that again so we can see it? When I click in here, you know, one thing I could do is make this font bigger. 16, that bigger so I can see it, so you can see it. Move this over, move it right there. Let's get rid of that little Y there. Okay, so now I wanna round this to more decimal places. So I need to get in there, sort of right click, and format the trend line label. And over here, the category I want to format are the numbers. Go to number. And yeah, we need at least two. The problem said we want two decimal places, so two will work. And just say OK. I'm surprised it didn't, uh, didn't do that. Tab. I didn't do it for some reason. Um, let's make this font a little smaller. Like, no, it sure didn't do it. Right click, format trend line label, number. Three places, I'll try four decimal places. Oh, I got it. No? Sorry, it's not working. I wanted it to work. Let me pause the video. Okay, so sorry about that. I'm not sure why it wasn't working. Um, I literally just went and made a new table. I, took, I used the other table and created a new chart. I didn't change the size of the font this time, but I, I right clicked in here and went to format trend label and then I just changed the number of decimal places and it, it adjusted them. There, it went to three, so I don't know why it was stuck there. It might have been my computer. Um, but I needed to get this 0 0.80 so that my answer can be evaluated to two decimal places. So it's 19.63x. I'll just check that it's right. 19.63x. 19.63x, and then plus whatever that second number was, 644.80. And we'll submit. And hopefully we get it right, yeah we do. Okay, so then if we wanted to predict, say, you know, would this be a good predictor for 10? Well, it's hard to know here because they're not telling us what these values represent. So if we don't know, what X and Y represent, it becomes harder to know how good of a predictor this equation is. Um, I'd say it'd be good for anything at least between one and six, and probably zero would be fine, and maybe up to nine. Um, it's hard to know. So we would just replace the X value with whatever we were plugging in and use it to estimate Y. Okay, that's it.